Hey, hello YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of the Tiny Backyard Food Forest. We're coming to you from the front yard today. I've got some sunflowers, wind turbines, solar panels on the roof, but more importantly, we have ripe uh, Congo watermelons. There's, what is that, one, two, three, four, five of them here in the front yard. And one of them looks like it's ready. The tendril has turned brown. I don't know if you can see that or not. See that? The spot underneath is still pretty white. It's a little bit creamy. Uh, so it's possible that it's not ready yet, but um, we're gonna go ahead and cut it off the vine here. No undoing that. And we will uh, meet you in the backyard for a little tour and we'll cut it open. Take a walk through the garden, just show you what's what's growing on in here. Um, a lot of melons. Melons are my favorite thing to grow. Um, so in here, there's a tamdu melon. There's a honey rock melon planted in there. They've kind of co-mingled together. You can't tell where one stops and one starts, but there's a lot of melons in here all over the place. I guess. More here. Um, there's a Kajari melon. Just starting here. Beautiful thing. Can't wait to see that grow up. A um, couple of Fajoas. Three Fajoas. Or pineapple guavas. We've got some persimmons going on. Some cucumbers. Uh, some regular cantaloupe here. I think I've got... Some back there. Uh, let's see, we've got a fig, we've got some blackberries, uh, hazelnut tree, apple tree. These are uh, lion's tail, probably about eight feet tall. Hummingbirds love them, bees love them. We have some uh, Mexican sour gherkins. Love these things. Some flowers. Pawpaw tree. There's some um, Isai kiwis. A grapevine. Another pawpaw. This is called Fuki. And you. Uh, eat the stock kind of like celery you have to boil it for I think 10 minutes um, to get the whatever the the toxic element is out of it um, we've got some currants this is a volunteer uh, squash of some kind I think there's three of them in here Well, hi ladies. Here's the girls. They're not camera shy. And uh, corn kind of coming to the end of its run there. Got some plums on. Yeah, if you can see them. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of. Um, The passion flowers. These grow just like crazy here. And coming through our grape tunnel. There are no grapes on this one this year. And this one is a black tail mountain. Watermelon. It's another persimmon there. No persimmons on that one this year. Got a tomato down there. Um, some blueberries. A couple of more tomatoes. This one is a black vernissage. This one is a uh, blue gold berry. There's some raspberries going on there. A plum tree. Got some plums. 
ripening up there. More blue gold berries. A uh, pink bumblebee. These ones are delicious. Another black vernissage. Uh, Grappoli de Iverno, I think. These two. And then a green vernissage here. Uh, lots of carrots, sunchokes. Our uh, Asian pear, they're just about ripe. I've been eating them anyway, they're, they're pretty good, but just not quite there. Got some peppers. What are these ones? Cayenne. Some more corn back there, past its prime. Actually, I picked what I wanted and then let the squirrels have the rest. I always figure I can go to the grocery store if I get hungry. They can't, so I like to leave a lot of food for them. Uh, there were lots of sunflowers in here that I cut, cut out after the squirrels took the heads off, so it looks a little bit bare in here. Some more corn and sunflowers. It's another uh, Blacktail Mountain. Some fennel in there. This is probably the nicest of the tomatoes back here. That thing is just beautiful. And that's one of the blue gold berries. Um, next to it is Grappoli de Iverno. And then a pink bumblebee next to that. Just tons and tons and tons and tons of gorgeous tomatoes on this. Look at that. Just everywhere. And I have some lettuce, carrots, beets, some Napa cabbage, uh, some uh, lettuce leaf basil, some dill in there. That's another uh, pawpaw and some currants, another grape. This is Szechuan pepper, almost ripe, ready to grind up. Um, another hazelnut, another black vernissage tomato, and in here we have some carrots, some onions, um, there's some, a couple of different kinds of eggplants, a few different kinds of squash, so spaghetti squash, uh, delicata, and this one, it's not tromboncini, but it's real similar to it. A couple more apple trees. Down here is a tigger melon. Can't wait for that one to ripen up and do a video on that one. A couple of uh, model melons. I'll do a video on those too when they ripen up. Uh, there's a, a Charente vine in there, but it's not ripe yet. Um, and some other root crops planted in there. Another apple tree. Not a great year for apples. Most, all my apples have worms in them, but whatever. I'm using it for fertilizer. All right. Let's cut into that melon. So this is the Congo watermelon. It weighed out at 20 pounds, eight ounces. And this is what Baker Creek has to say about it. It says um, it takes about 90 days to maturity, large 30 to 40 pound melon. Yeah, we undershot that a little bit this time. Um, very tough, striped rind. The flesh is deep red and very firm has a high sugar content, and is an excellent, big, tasty watermelon. Um, AAS winner from 1950. So, let's cut her open and see if we picked it too early. It is pretty white. Actually, it looks a little bit more creamy now in this light, so we might have gotten lucky. I guess it's right in the middle. Give it a shot. Do you want to come in close to the melon? Ready? Got a little bit of a crack there, that's a good sign. All right, moment of truth. Oh, it looks awesome. 
Okay, getting closer, get a good picture. That looks fantastic. I don't smell anything. Um, other melons in the past, when I've cut them open, they've had a really strong scent. I'm not... Oh, there we go. Although it seems kind of mild. We might be a little bit early. It might be a little bit early, but let's take a taste there. All right. Mm. It's fantastic. It is a little bit early. It's still good though. I love it. At least there's four more that I can let grow longer. So that's like another 80 pounds worth of watermelon. So Congo for the win. We'll see you next time.